Time magazine called him the unsung hero behind the internet. CNN called him a father of the internet. President Bill Clinton called him one of the great minds of the information age. He has been voted history's greatest scientist of African descent. He is Philip M. Iguali. He's coming to Trinidad and Tobago to launch the 2008 Kwame Ture Lecture Series on Sunday, June 8th at the JFK Auditorium, Uwe St. Augustine, 5 p.m. The Emancipation Support Committee invites you to come and hear this inspirational mind address the theme, Crossing New Frontiers to Conquer Today's Challenges. This lecture is one you cannot afford to miss. Admission is free, so be here on Sunday, June 8, 5 p.m. at the JFK Auditorium, New East St. Augustine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm Philip M. Aguale. The computer is the greatest invention since fire. The modern supercomputer is the greatest invention in modern physics. I believe that we are witnessing a technological change of tectonic proportion. Each generation redefined the word computer. Our descendants definition of the computer will perhaps become synonymous and correspond to our phrase, planetary-sized super brain that enshrouds our Earth. In year million, I foresee each post-human person as a super-intelligent cyborg that is part human, part machine, and part computer, and that has a great sense of humor I foresee their super brains as enshrouding even the solar system and as one super being that can live forever. When parallel supercomputing meets the biggest questions in computational science, the impossible to solve becomes possible to solve. Parallel supercomputing is the vital technology that enables us to ask the biggest questions and then find new answers to those previously unanswered questions. I'm Philip Emagwale. Back on February 1, 1922, a science fiction story was published in the book titled Weather Prediction by numerical process. That science fiction story described how in theory 64,000 human computers could be employed and used to solve the partial differential equations that must be used to predict the weather for the whole Earth. Back on June 20, 1974, in Cavallis, Oregon, United States, the day I began programming supercomputers, I set my mind on programming the fastest supercomputer. A decade later, my supercomputer hopeful became a new internet that is a new global network of 64 binary thousand processors. On July 4, 1989, I figured out how to handcast the weather and do so one mile deep inside an oil field that is the size of a town. That massively parallel supercomputer that is a new internet de facto that I set my mind on ultimately became my signature invention that became the subject of school reports. My contribution to the development of the computer is this. I was the first person to figure out how to turn the science fiction of parallel processing across millions of processors into the non-fiction that is today's supercomputer that occupies the space of a soccer field. The reason I remember the date I discovered practical parallel processing 
was that it was the U.S. Independence Day. You cannot study to become the first parallel supercomputer scientist. You can study to become an aerospace engineer. But you cannot study to become the first astronaut or to travel to the planet Mars. You become a pioneer astronaut by becoming the first person to travel to Mars. Similarly, you cannot study to become the first person to figure out how to harness practical parallel supercomputing and do so to solve real world problems. I'm Philip Emagwale. I became the first parallel supercomputer scientist because I was the first person that performed the world's fastest parallel processed calculations that solved real world problems and because I was the only person to accomplish that alone as opposed to team research. What is the world's fastest computer? Speed is at the core essence of the supercomputer. The first newspaper article on the supercomputer was dated February 15, 1946 and appeared on page one of the New York Times. That first newspaper article was titled, quote, Electronic Computer Flashes Answers May Speed Engineering. Unquote. Airplanes fly at about the same speed they flew in the 1950s. If today's parallel supercomputer speed of a thousand million billion calculations per second was discovered in the 1950s, that decade's supercomputer could compute three million billion times faster. That first supercomputer of 1946 could only perform 385 multiplications per second or 40 divisions per second or 3 square root calculations per second. That first supercomputer was about 1,000 times faster than the fastest computing aid of the time. That supercomputer speed increase from 1946 to present is like an airplane completing a 30,000 year long trip to a distant galaxy in just one day. The car of today has one engine and four tires just as it had a century ago. By comparison, the fastest supercomputer of today has 10.65 million processors or 10.65 million electronic brains instead of the one electronic brain that it had in mid-1989. The progress achieved in supercomputer technology is akin to completing in one day an intergalactic outer space travel that might have taken 300 centuries if the same trip had started in 1989. Prior to my discovery of practical parallel supercomputing that occurred on the 4th of July 1989, parallel processing was mocked, ridiculed, and dismissed as a beautiful theory that wasn't confirmed with an experiment. Beauty is a subjective term. The discovery of mathematical beauty that has no physical reality is not equivalent to the discovery of a physical phenomenon that can be experimentally reconfirmed. My contribution to the development of the computer was that I experimentally confirmed parallel processing. 
and did so via an experiment that I conducted across a new internet that was a new global network of 65,536 processors that were identical to each other, that were tightly coupled to each other, and that shared nothing between each other. Metaphorically speaking, my supercomputing choices were to either walk the shortest path called serial processing on only one processor or fly the longest path called parallel processing across millions of processors. Flying was quicker because I can reduce or parallel process 30,000 years to just one day. What is the contribution of Philip M. Aguale to the development of the supercomputer? In 1989, I became an integral part of conversations on contributions to the development of the fastest computers. I became the subject of school reports through my mathematical discovery of how to solve initial boundary value problems arising in mathematical physics and how to solve them across a new internet that is a new global network of processors that we are identical to each other and that we are tightly coupled to each other and that, and that each operated its own operating system. The contribution of Philip Emma Aguale to the development of the supercomputer is this. I was the first person to see the ensemble of processors in a new way, namely as a new internet in which the processors have a direct relationship with nearest neighboring processors. In the old paradigm of supercomputing, Processors were independent entities. I introduced a new paradigm, a new way of thinking about the new computer as a new internet. In my new way or new paradigm, I thought of my new supercomputer as a new internet that was a new global network of 64 binary thousand processors. My new internet was my instrument of extreme scale computational physics that made the news headlines because I discovered how to harness it and use it as a virtual supercomputer and used it to solve grand challenge initial boundary value problems that the computer cannot solve. My invention, namely my new internet, that is a virtual supercomputer, took a new scientific and technological significance and did both in different contexts. How are supercomputers used? As an extreme scale computational physicist, I used massively parallel supercomputers to execute complicated calculations that would be impossible to execute on the conventional supercomputer. For me, Philip M. Aguale, the parallel supercomputer was my digital thermometer and an instrument that can be used to forecast the temperature rather than tell it. And depending on the grand challenge problem, the required calculations can be the most complicated ever executed. In 1989, I discovered new ways of using the massively parallel supercomputer to solve real-world problems. Fast forward into the June 20, 1990 issue of the Wall Street Journal that highlighted my discovery of parallel processing as the vital technology that will underpin all supercomputers. I discovered 
how to harness 64 binary thousand processors and harness them to forecast the quote unquote weather at a depth of one mile below the surface of the earth and across an oil field that is the size of a town. If you believe your weather forecast, then you have to believe that a system of coupled, non-linear, time-dependent, and three-dimensional partial differential equations we are discretized and we are parallel processed across a few billion processors. The Philip M. Aguale formula that then U.S. President Bill Clinton praised during his White House speech of August 26, 2000 was in essence how to mathematically and computationally solve that grand challenge problem and how to solve it across the millions of processors that outlined and defined a supercomputer that is an internet de facto. The Philip M. Aguale formula is my contribution to the partial differential equation of calculus and physics. The Philip M. Aguale formula opened the new field of massively parallel processed, extreme scaled computational fluid dynamics that in turn underpins the fields of weather forecasting, petroleum reservoir simulation, and diverse sub-disciplines. What is the Philip M. Aguali supercomputer? For 30 years, I hardly gave lectures, and that absence promoted an air of mystery surrounding my contributions to the development of the parallel supercomputer. In the 1980s, I abandoned the sequential supercomputer and the vector supercomputer and abandoned both technologies for what is named parallel supercomputing. In my new paradigm of supercomputing, the total processor to processor email communications can dominate the total computations. In my new paradigm of supercomputing, the grand challenge problem is fractured into 64 binary thousand problems that in turn allowed a new parallel supercomputer to emerge from the bowels of my assemble of processors that defined my new internet that is called the Philip M. Aguali supercomputer. The discovery of parallel supercomputing created the hottest sub-disciplines in mathematics, physics, and computer science. That discovery of parallel supercomputing had rich and fertile consequences across the grand challenge problems of science and engineering. But back in 1943, Thomas Watson, the chairman of IBM, said, and I quote, I think there is a world market for maybe five computers. End of quote. Back in 1957, the editor in charge of business books for Prentice Hall said, and I quote, I have traveled the length and breadth of this country and talked with the best people. And I can assure you that data processing is a fact that will last out the year. End of quote. Back in the 1970s and 80s, I was mocked and dismissed from my research group. I was rejected because I pursued my research that led to my discovery that a parallel supercomputer will become the vital technology that will underpin every supercomputer. The parallel supercomputer is a tool that is used to accelerate innovation and do so because a scientific experiment such as general circulation modeling 
to foresee otherwise unforeseeable global warming that would have taken 30,000 years to complete on an, on an ordinary computer can now be parallel processed across an ensemble of millions of processors and take only one day to complete on a supercomputer. Parallel processing is a critical and, and enabling technology that shifted the paradigm in both computing and supercomputing and shifted our way of counting from counting only one thing at a time to counting a million things at once. Parallel processing is a new way of counting. Parallel processing is the cornerstone of drug design that accelerated the discovery of new chemotherapy drugs. New drugs that can kill cancer cells. A new understanding of how Alzheimer's or senile dementia destroys memory. The parallel supercomputer is a tool that makes it possible for a medical doctor to analyze and interpret scans and to detect different disorders and to provide better diagnostic information. The parallel supercomputer is used to accelerate the rate of discovery of new compounds, new materials, new physics, new mathematics, and of course, new computer science. The invention of parallel processing opened a doorway to a new world in supercomputing that is called extreme scale computational physics. That new parallel processed pathway leads to the emerging fields of supercomputing the weather for above and below the surface of the earth. Parallel processing is the vital technology that opened new possibilities that were essential to the development of new sciences, new technologies, and new fields of study. Parallel processing made the impossible to solve possible to solve. Parallel processing widened our horizons and change the way we looked at the computer and the supercomputer. Parallel processing enabled the supercomputer scientists to produce new facts, new mathematics, and, and new physics. The parallel supercomputer brought an enrichment of meanings in the sciences. The parallel supercomputer is the universal enabler of mathematics and science. The first supercomputer that I began programming back on June 20, 1974, was locked away in the bowels of the building at 1800 Southwest Campus Way, Covalis, Oregon, United States. The supercomputer is not used for writing letters or doing taxes or planning a vacation. Since 1957, the supercomputer was programmed by an exclusive priesthood who were vast in a language called Fortran. The term Fortran is the acronym for formula translation. I was one of those supercomputer priests that was at home with Fortran. By the late 1970s and early 80s, I was programming the fastest computers in the foggy bottom neighborhood of Washington, District of Columbia, and in College Park, Maryland. Back from mid-1977 through mid-1980s, the research laboratories that were active in supercomputing and that were 
a short bus ride from my residences in the Adams Morgan neighborhood of Washington, D.C. and near the Silver Spring Metro Station, include the National Security Agency in Fort Meade, Maryland, U.S. Naval Research Laboratory in Washington, D.C., U.S. Aberdeen Proving Ground in Aberdeen, Maryland, David Taylor Model Basin in Bethesda, Maryland, National Institute of Standards and Technology in Gettysburg, Maryland, and NASA Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. Back then, I was programming the fastest computers and doing so to solve linear systems of equations that arose in extreme scale algebra that in turn arose from my finite difference discretizations of the partial differential equations that I invented and that governed initial boundary value problems of physics and calculus. As a mathematical aside, the differential equation is the most recurring decimal within the grand challenge problems solved in all supercomputers and solved since the first automatic computer was invented in 1946. My discovery of how practical parallel supercomputing can be used to solve grand challenge problems was a breakthrough that was important enough to make the news headlines. That particular discovery of practical parallel supercomputing that occurred on the 4th of July 1989 opened the door for the modern supercomputer that is powered by millions of processors that is used to cooperatively solve real-world problems. That discovery made the news headlines because it enabled us to see computers and supercomputers in a different way, namely as parallel processing or solving a million problems at once instead of solving only one problem at a time. What does the world's fastest supercomputer look like inside? The world's fastest supercomputer occupies the space of a soccer field, but yet its crown jewel, called parallel processing, has 200 miles of email cables that remains invincible. Back in the 1970s, only a few computer scientists had seen and programmed the most massively parallel supercomputer in the world. Back in the 1980s, I was the only full-time programmer of the most massively parallel supercomputer ever built. In 1989, most computer scientists cannot recognize a parallel supercomputer if they see it. I was the first person to recognize that the new global network of identical processors that were equal distances apart, that were on the surface of a sphere in three and higher dimensions, was completely different from any supercomputer any programmer had programmed before. In 1989, I was in the news headlines because I recognized the new technology to be a new computer that is a new internet that could be harnessed to solve grand challenge problems and solve them at light speed and used to parallel process massive calculations across millions of commodity of the shelf processors that I integrated into one seamless cohesive supercomputer. What does a supercomputer look like? The world's fastest supercomputer must occupy the space of a soccer field and do so because 
It is comprised of 10 million processors that we are packed closely together. The supercomputer that I program is 10 million times faster than your computer and is faster because it is powered by an ensemble of 10 million processors that is solving 10 million problems at once. In high performance computing, the quintessential question is this. What makes a computer super? At 8.15 in the morning of the 4th of July, 1989, in Los Alamos, New Mexico, United States, I discovered that parallel processing or solving a million problems at once makes the supercomputer super. It's been said that a mathematical truth is not always synonymous to a physical truth. I discovered that parallel supercomputing is a mathematical truth that is synonymous to a physical truth. In the 1970s and 80s, I was the lone wolf parallel processing programmer and the first supercomputer scientist to recognize that the parallel supercomputer could be harnessed and used to solve extreme scale problems arising in computational physics. I was the first person to figure out how to use the parallel supercomputer to solve real world problems. I am the first programmer of the modern supercomputer that solves grand challenge problems and did so by dividing them into millions of smaller problems and solving them simultaneously or in parallel and solving them with a one-to-one -one problem to processor correspondence and solving them across as many processors. In summary, my signature invention was my discovery that parallel processing is the vital technology that underpins every supercomputer and that helps solve unsolved real-world problems. What makes a computer super? China spent $300 million to build one parallel supercomputer. Japan has a parallel supercomputer on the drawing board that will cost $1.25 billion. A computer that costs a billion dollars is a supercomputer. The parallel supercomputer was not invented in its entirety in only one day. The modern supercomputer began in an eureka moment, namely my discovery that occurred on the 4th of July, 1989. On that date, I discovered that parallel processed time to solutions is 16 orders of magnitude faster than its serial processed counterpart. My discovery inspired the adoption of parallel processing as the standard technology that powers all supercomputers manufactured. But most importantly, a supercomputer isn't super until it is used to forecast the weather for your evening news or used to handcast the weather within the crude oil, injected water, and natural gas that is flowing one mile underneath the surface of a production oil field that is the size of a town. That handcast or parallel processed petroleum reservoir simulation was simulated at the fastest speeds in supercomputing. Back on the 4th of July, 1989, I was the lone wolf full-time programmer 
of the most massively parallel supercomputer ever built. And that was parallel processing across a new internet that was a new global network of two raised to power 16 processors that were tightly coupled to each other, that were equal distances apart from each other, that were identical to each other, and that shared nothing between each other. The central processing unit or processor is the brain of the computer and my supercomputer was powered by 65,536 brains or as many processors that each operated its own operating system. Why must the research scientist use the supercomputer? The answer is that some of nature's secrets are discoverable only by parallel processing and doing so within the fastest supercomputers. The weather and the climate are intimately related. The climate is the weather averaged over a century. We get the weather, but we expect the climate. The predictive accuracy of climate models increases when the number of processors used to predict the climate increases. The parallel supercomputer is in the hands of the weather forecaster in the United States. The supercomputer is in the hands of the extreme scale petroleum reservoir simulator in the Niger Delta oil fields of the southeastern region of Nigeria that is seeking to discover and recover otherwise elusive crude oil and natural gas that was buried for one million years and buried one mile below the surface of an oil field that is the size of a town. In extreme scale computational medicine, the technology of the massively parallel supercomputer is the bedrock of the technique of massively parallel sequencing that yields high throughput, throughput in DNA sequencing. Back in 1989, I was in the news headlines because I discovered what makes the world's fastest supercomputer fast. I discovered that parallel processing is the vital technology that puts the super into the supercomputer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Philip Emerson. Insightful and brilliant lecture. Insightful and brilliant lecture.